Hello everybody, this is Barbara Drask, AKA The Deal Tiva, and today I am here with the Groove Cart team. Wave hello, Mike and Matt, say, hello, say hi. How are you guys doing? Hi everyone. Hello. Thank you guys so much for being here today. We are gonna um, quickly uh, just switch screens and we're gonna um, dig into doing a demo for you guys of how do you set up your Groove start Cart store, your first store, from beginning to end. We're gonna use, of course, unicorns as a sample because you know I talk about fanatical niche markets in my bundle masterclass and um, we always use unicorns as an example for some reason I guess because I like them um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and just um, you can rewatch this you can rewatch the replay take a lot of notes and reach out to me on Facebook at uh, you can join my Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva that's d-e-a-l-d-i-v-a -A. ask me anything you want about groove cart or anything else selling on Amazon or online. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Matt's going to put together the demo. Go ahead and share your screen, Matt. And I'm going to hide myself here so they can concentrate, and I'm going to go on mute. But I know you're I'll still there. Questions. I know you're still okay. there, Mike, the same, so um, we can uh, get questions answered if we need to. So, you got it. Thanks. All right. Let's, let's do this. Hey, guys. Welcome to GrooveCard. So um, this is going to be the model store we're going to use just to, uh, to get everything going. It's uh, Unicorn Lovers, and it's doing, uh, has a lot of great products that we can also mimic and test from and uh, see how we could build a store similar to that one. Well, let, uh, let's clarify real quick. This Unicorn Lovers website is one that I found that's on a different platform. It's not on GrooveCart, but uh, we're using it as kind of a template to, um, mod to, to create our own store based on unicorns. Cool. Thank you, Barbara. So the first steps um, that we're going to do is uh, we're going to start probably with the look and feel of your store. And uh, we're going to create some things that's going to help you be powerful in e-commerce. Um, so um, the first thing we're going to want to know is uh, give information to your merchants about who you are and, uh, you know, a, a little bit of marketing about yourself. So we're going to uh, drive down to settings and then the first option we have are the common options and over here one of the first thing you want to do is upload your logo it identifies who you are and make sure that you are um, the brand that you want to be so in this particular case just for the purpose of this exercise I'm going to take this uh, this logo and you can save it um, I'm sure you have your own logo already so you can uh, you can save your logo uh, on your local hard drive or pick it up from there. In this particular case, I'm just going to save it real quick from uh, from this hard drive. And we have a great feature here, which gives you the option to upload your logo. One of the many questions that we get from the user is, how big is my logo has to be? Well, GrooveCard is smart enough to resize your logo and make it the most efficient size possible for your website. So I'm going to simply click logo. Uh, go back and find the logos that I uploaded and uh, upload in onto my website. And while you don't think there's much happening, it's actually a whole happening in the background. And you can do the same thing with your five icon. Your five icon is actually that mini logos that you're going to see here on your website. You can upload it and GrooveCard will resize it automatically for you. Once you do that, simply click save. And now you're going to see your new logo being updated. And also, if you visit your website, so in this particular case, we're going to go to divademo.goofcard.com, you're now going to see your logo updated. One thing that I like to do is to create a horizontal logo because it kind of fits nicely in your page by default. And if you have room, based on the size of your logo, maybe you can uh, add some additional information or maybe a one-liner about your business as well. So here we started with our logo. And the second thing you want to want to do is provide information about who you are. This is going to update your terms and condition. It's going to update in many different places on your website as well. So in this particular case, we're going to be Diva Demo Store. Our telephone number is going to be 222. Um, you know, um, I'm just going to make it a bunch of twos here. I like to make it look nice. Make sure I use a, a dash and so on. And your support email that we offer you by default is support at divademo.goofcard.com. However, it really doesn't do much until you select your own domain. Once you have your own domain, which we're going to look at a little bit later, this is going to set up, um, we're going to provide you with 
uh, a support uh, ticket system and you're going to be able to use your own email. If you want to use a different email for support, you can use uh, whichever email address you have. So in this particular case, maybe we're going to say divademo at gmail.com. Of course, we recommend using your own domain and getting your support at your own domain.com, um, just like um, most, most business do. So go ahead and enter your shop address. Um, I personally like to get a PO box here. I think it's a little bit better since it's going to be published in your terms and conditions, but it's also required to be able to process credit card. So here I'm going to do one, two, three, four Main Street in um, Sarasota, Florida. And then I'm going to make up here a quick zip code. And here we go. Once you do that, you simply, all you have to do really is save. And you already came uh, a good ways into the uh, building of your store. If I refresh your page, um, your live page, you're already going to notice that the store name has changed here on top. Uh, we can't really see it, I think, with the screen share. Here you go. Now you got a nice store name. This is how Google is going to read you. And so it's really important to, uh, to do that. So the next step is, um, I would say one of the very important next step is to start adding product. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's going to be uh, easier to evaluate the rest of our store and how to, how to um, configure everything based on adding product. There are several ways of adding product. The first step is going to be to click over product. And then simply you can create a new product. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter where you get your products from. It could be some products that you already own. It could be uh, products that you're purchasing for drop shipping. It could be, you know, um, digital products or even, you know, music or CDs. Um, but Matt, just for the, the sake of um, exercise, the, the folks who follow me are usually Amazon sellers. They're selling on Amazon. Um, so they, they probably have um, their own products that they private label or they're wholesaling products, or they're creating product bundles. So the first product I'd love to see added is uh, maybe like a wholesale product or a bundle. Cool, we can do that. Um, do you think we can take product from this side just for testing purposes? Or? Uh, we could, I actually sent you an image for a bundle, but go ahead and take it from that site and um, yeah. Just, for, just for a product for now. So yeah. let's say we take, um, I don't know, I like this pajama, okay. looks nice. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal it. Of course, guys, don't do that. I, we're assuming you're really no, no, no. having. Yeah, we're list. just we're just using this um, this website, the Unicorn Lovers, as an example of how can we quickly set up a store. Um, and this just gives us a little bit of content that we, we can use. But we're not going to sell off of this Groove Cart store that we're setting up. This is just for demo purposes. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So. Um, I'm just going to take a couple images as well. I'm going to take three for the purpose of doing this demo and seven. And, and here we go. And I'm going to take the product name as well here. So once we click uh, new product, enter your product name. Uh, and let me see, what was the product name here? It's a little bit shorter than that. Let me go ahead and recopy it. I don't think I got it right. I did. Okay. So I'm just going to do this. It's a too long a name, right? So this name is also used by Google to understand better what is your main product. So you don't want the name to be too long. Actually, you want it to be as short as possible. I don't know what's going on with the data we're getting from the other website. We're going to do um, adult unicorn pajama. I don't know what the real text is here. It doesn't matter. But go ahead and name your product. Um, here you have different options uh, on visibility. You can say, hey, do I want my product to be visible to everyone or only in somebody searches for it or only if I have the full URL. Okay, this can come in very, very useful uh, at one time. Um, and um, simply click on change next to images. Then you can drag and drop the images that you have uh, already saved on your hard drive for the product, such as this one, right? So here I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to pick up the product from um, my hard drive, I see I had them here on the logo. And you can simply drop them directly into here. Okay, and the system is gonna take care of uploading them. I'm gonna take a, maybe try to do two at a time just to challenge the system a little bit more. And let them upload. Now you might choose very easily which one is your cover images. There's a small caveat that we're working on to improve the customer experience, but 
uh, here once you, you can choose your cover image and make sure to click save a lot of customers miss that right now and we're gonna try to simplify you can also add captions to your um, to your images which is gonna help you rank better for SEO so I'm gonna click save and the next step is gonna say uh, set up your pricing if a product has variant then we're not going to set up the pricing here. It's going to be a next step. But if a product doesn't have any variant, you can actually set up your entire pricing from these four options here. Um, but let's say we're going to sell this um, this product for forty nine ninety nine. You can say my compared price is ninety nine dot ninety nine. And what's going to happen is it's going to say it's going to cross out this price on your website and say, hey, uh, it's only forty nine ninety nine. On your wholesale cost is simply how much are you buying the product for. It's great information to add so that it's going to help you actually uh, create stats and data about how much profit you're making per product. So let's say we buy this product for $9.99. Uh, you can click save. And uh, if you do have a flat shipping fee, let's say you want to charge everybody $3 to ship that product, you can simply add that number here as well. Um, and then if you do have variant, so let's say on that product we're going to have variant. I think we got two variant here that the system is telling us about. One is color. Uh, and then we saw, I think we had a blue one, if I remember right, and maybe a um, purple one. So I'm just simply going to add purple and blue. And here you can actually decide you want it to be a color or a texture. It can be an image or it can be a radio button. In this particular case, we're going to make it a little bit more complicated and choose color or texture. So we'll have to get back to it and actually add the color and texture to this. And then we're going to say that we get different sizes. So maybe simply we're going to, here as well, I think a radio button is the best option. So we're going to do small, medium, large, and just Excel, for example. And you can tell the system to go ahead and generate your um, variant. So what is a variant? A variant is small, medium, and large. I assume you guys are used to that term already. And so all every possibilities are being created. As you can tell here, now we've got a blue in size small, a blue in size medium, and a blue in size uh, large. If you would like to add a SKU number or reference number, you would have to do that manually for each product. This can be very useful, especially for fulfillment purposes. Um, so you cannot bulk edit your SKU number because it would have to be different per size. But if you would like to bulk it in your prices, simply click here, then go over to the new price that you want it to be. So for example, you want your compared price to be, we said it would be $99.99, and your actual sell price may be $49.95, for example. Then you can click apply. Then the next hey, step I'm, is- I'm sorry to interrupt, Matt. I've got to, I just want to tie this together for Amazon sellers. So on the, um, on the SKU area, uh, I would put in the SKU. First of all, does the SKU show up on the website? No, I mean you. Okay. Good. We That's could make it very good. easily, but in this particular case, no, not by default. So what I would do, guys, is I would put um, the SKU from the manufacturer. So if you're if you're wholesaling these from supplier and they have an item number in their catalog, make that your SKU in the back end, and that way when you go to reorder, um, you can just grab the SKU instead of trying to look it up in their catalog again. Thank you. Next step is we can go ahead and add our uh, um, description. You can, you know, however you do it. Uh, here, I just went ahead and I didn't really think about this. I copied and pasted from what was available here at uh, the Unicorn site, since it's the same product. Um, mind you, I'm going to delete this as soon as the demo is done. Uh, but I'm going to head I have to I have to do the legal caveat here, guys. Don't go copying other people's copyrighted material or photographs, images, uh, marketing text. Uh, you know, do it. Create all of that on your own. We're just doing this for demo purposes to show you how quickly you can set up a store and walk you through the steps. And we're going to delete this content after we're done. Okay. So Absolutely. I just want to give that caveat. Create yeah. your own content. Uh, and if you want to, you can actually just, this is a, a nice editor. It works just like Word, you know, you can boldface, you can add an image, you can even add graphs, you can add codes if you're uh, uh, HTML buff. I mean, you can do just about anything you want. You know, line, right, left, change colors, font size, yaddy, yaddy, blah, blah, blah. It's available from right here as well. If you want the product to be, for example, available as a, uh, only as an upsell, or even if sometimes you use it as an upsell, then we created an upsell description so that you can have a, a special block. And maybe in this particular case, the idea behind it is that if uh, a product is an upsell, 
post check out is you might have a different text and say something similar to only um, available to you and you can do any text or only with your purchase or I thought you might like, right? So that would be an upsell product after. Right. So after Matt, I, I hate to keep interrupting you, but I need to tie in what we're doing to Amazon sellers because I think Please. it's helpful yeah. for them to understand. So I apologize that I keep on interrupting you, but there's a reason for my madness. Um, no, no so problem. Please. What is, what is an upsell, guys? Um, when Amazon says people who bought this also bought, they're cross-selling. Or after you add something to an Amazon cart, it says um, here are some other products you might like. That's what an upsell is in the e-commerce world. So, for example, uh, what would you add as an upsell to those um, pajamas? How about slippers, right? How about socks? Yeah, slippers. Exactly. Slippers or socks. So you would create a second product with unicorn slippers and then make that your upsell to the pajamas. Does that make sense? So when somebody adds the pajamas to their cart, it says, hey, wait. And then whatever Matt writes in that uh, field down there says, we think this would look really cute with the pajamas that you're buying. Uh, choose your size now and then upsell them to the slippers. That's what that means. Well, and even better, what we can do, Barbara, with that box right here, is we can actually sell as a first product normally, take the payment from the customer, and then once the customer is expecting a thank you page, maybe have a pop-up and say, hey, but wait, I think you might also like these matching socks, right? That's because what Vistaprint does. If you guys ever try to check out a Vistaprint, absolutely. they have all these upsells, and then even after you pay, they say, but wait. You have 20 minutes to double your order for $5 or whatever after you've already paid. So that's brilliant that GrooveCart can do this. Thanks, Matt. I didn't yeah. know. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is probably one of the coolest feature. I'm so excited to get in there and, and create my, my first store. I'm, I'm really excited. So thanks for doing this demo today. I know. You're very welcome. Uh, here, what you have to do really real quick is put, you don't have to do that, actually. It, it's a uh, it's a pronoun, but you can actually add your Product width, height, depth, and weight. That's if you use a shipping services that requires that information. If you don't, just ignore this. But one thing I really like to do is come up with a tag because those tags become very, very useful for organizing your product, for searches, and that kind of stuff. So here, what's a good tag? Maybe it's a, a unicorn. Um, maybe not if the whole size is about unicorn, but for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to tag it. Unicorn. Matt, are those tags, um, are they SEO'd? Are they indexed? No, yeah, Google has stopped, uh, uh, completely stopped doing SEO on keywords. So that pretty much made the tags almost very, very irrelevant. So for SEO purposes, I would say little strengths, but a lot of strengths to help you increase your sales because they are going to come up on search. Okay, hey, where is the most, so is it the title that's going to get the most Google juice? Yeah, it's going to be, so let's talk about Google juice. It's going to be your next block right here if you click change. Oh, thank you. Your meta title is going to have a lot of juice your meta description right and your url right so um right here by default we use the current title and here in the next release of roof card we're actually going to put what it is instead of saying hey it's a similar product name we're actually going to show it there and the meta description so in this particular case what i would do is make sure that the word you know unicorn and pyjama are in the product name because that's going to be your page title then i'm also going to make sure that uh, i use in my meta description so something similar to discover you know, uh, this always start with a call to action. Discover, buy, uh, find out, you know, learn, you know, uh, the best unicorn pajama for adult, maybe. Uh, right. It doesn't make any sense. You guys can do something. That's okay. Do not exceed 180 or 160 characters, but make sure to use a keyword that you repeat in your product description at, three, at least three to four times. And that's really? You say you want them to repeat the keywords? Right. In the description. No, don't do it. Don't do it in a gross way because that's what Google knows how to catch. So if you write down in your title "unicorn pajama" and you write down in product name and then you write it down four times in your product description, right. it doesn't work. So the right. meta description, we would put something like um, uh, "get the softest fantasy pajamas with unicorns for unicorn right. lovers." You don't have to rewrite that. I'm just telling you guys. So the meta description in Google, when somebody Googles unicorn pajamas or softest uni or soft unicorn pajamas, um, it'll come up with the title of the product, but then that, that description underneath it is called the meta description, and that's what they see underneath the title. Right, Matt? Actually, and yeah, and actually we're going to look at the page and see what it looks like. Awesome. So totally. So here, guys, this is what it took to have enough to sell a product. So if we click preview... And it took longer because I kept interrupting and asking questions, but this could go pretty darn quickly when you get used to the interface, which is very logically laid out. 
But this is our store now. Look at this. This is our demo site. That's our demo product. Boom. So we can do a little bit more, right? I would. Uh, so a lot of people, I'd love to mention that, Barbara, is asking me, but Matt, why do you have an add to cart button on top and why do you have one in the bottom? And it looks kind of foolish, but in reality, there's a, a good logic behind the madness. It's going to help you sell more, and I'm going to show you guys why. Most of your sales on desktop are going to come probably from mobile. No. Right? So by doing this, think about the experience on a mobile phone, right? Yep. You, don't want, you want people to know where that add to cart button is. We also have a couple of themes where the add to cart button is always floating at the bottom of your screen on some mobile phone. So uh, the logic here is just, you know, uh, making sure that, uh, that it's always visible and the customer doesn't have to look for that button. So our, our store is going to be mobile optimized regardless of what they're, you know, how they're entering our store. Are they going to be able to, it's going to be like scrunched, scrunched down or. Oh, yeah, it is 100% mobile optimized. That, that was uh, one of the biggest challenges and something that we wanted to do better than the other platform was mobile optimization. The checkout, every single page is terms and condition. Everything is fully uh, mobile optimized. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at, um, I know you, GrooveCart allows us to pull in uh, dropship products direct, directly from AliExpress, correct? Right, so I'd like to do one or two more changes to this page, just sure. to make sure we wrap it up. And once you have your product, you see how it says color and it's not very good. You can simply go to, uh, make sure your product goes online. So that now makes it active, right? I'm going to go to product and I'm going to click, real quick, I'm going to click manage variant. And here you can decide how you can display any of your variant on the front office. So if you guys remember, we had uh, those colors. You can click edit. And, up. Oh, excuse me, click on the product, not edit. That was just to rename something you already did. I'm going to click on the product. And here you can say, hey, this is how I would like blue to look like, right? So I'm going to say, hey, my blue, um, click on edit, and then pick a color for the blue. And then we'll do the same. So here I'm going to pick one quick color so that it looks, uh, what does blue look like? Maybe like this to do it quickly. Click save. And then look at that. Now by just doing a, a couple of things, we were able to really uh, change the look of that uh, product page. Let's see. I'm having a hard time with Zoom here, taking over control. There we go. I'm going to refresh this page. And look at that. Now we got, uh, oh, wrong side. <laughs> There we go. Now look at that. We're going to have the nice blue color here. And of course, you can put any color, making it a lot easier to buy on mobile on your real phone. Or you can actually add an image of the uh, product here if you like better, right? You could simply add the image here. So that, that makes for a well configured product. Another trick, like Barbara mentioned, is how about if we bring a product from the outside, uh, such as AliExpress? So we try to make that very, very easy for you guys. We created an app called AliExpress Connect. So all I'm sorry, you have to I have to interrupt you again, Matt. On that page, I saw a discount if you buy multiple. Where, where did we set that up? On our um, demo page, there was a discount if you buy two, a discount if you buy three. Did you see that? Yeah, so we can set up a discount here fairly easily. All right, or you'd have to add a new coupon. So uh, coupons... Well, look, look at that page, because it's already putting default information in there. Pull up our demo page. You mean the unicorn page? Our demo page. I thought, oh, that's the, okay, that's the page that we were, okay. I thought that was ours. <laughs> Actually, we can do that super easily, too. We can totally do that very easily. Uh, but um, to do that, you simply had to add a discount. So you, let's say you call it multiple on unicorn, right? Right. Uh, you can generate a code, but you don't have to. If you don't generate a code, it actually never requires a code. If you generate a code, the customer would have to say multiple, right? So it depends on your marketing or whatever code you come up with, right? It de so it depends on what kind of marketing. You activity. do like a Black Friday code or something. Yeah, you can do that, right? Or if you don't want a code, then it's going to apply it automatically on checkout. You can say, hey, is this apply to only one customer? Let's say you had a customer you wanted to do a special deal to. Uh, from what date to what date, you can pick on what product it applies. Uh, for example, here we're going to do, it's not like we have a lot of product to pick from, so... We're going to say this one's going to be for uh, this particular product. You can even set up which color and so on. And then you're going to put your condition. You can do offers such as free shipping, a certain percent discount, which is what they did in the case. So you would put 15 
for the purchase of two, right? And that's it. And then I like can, I like that they can offer um, uh, buy two get free shipping, or your cart minimum is fifty dollars get free shipping, or something like that. Right, and you can make it apply only on one product or multiple products. You can do a free gift, so you have so many different options. So your first step would be to create a discount. <clears throat> Not assign a coupon to it if you want it to apply every time, and then just make sure it match your description here, and you get it. Brilliant. Yeah, see, that is our that is our cart. You see, it's already there. Right, because I just copied and pasted the description from there. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I don't yeah, know if it's a separate launch, so that's in, the, that's in the description. That buy right. account is in the description field. Okay, thanks. Right, and that's how I did it on the other store as well, I guess. Okay. Um, so here, yep, so we can easily get products from AliExpress. All you have to do is uh, enable the uh, AliExpress Connect app by going over to App Manager. So now, guys, we're going to take a look at pulling in drop shipped products from AliExpress. So what we just to recap, what we just did is we created our own product. It could be a bundle, or it could be a wholesale product, or one of your own private label products. Um, and you can do as many of those as you like. And now we're going to start adding drop shipped products to the same store. So you can have a hybrid of store where it's your products drop shipped and print on demand. So exactly. So your step here while Barbara was talking, I simply enabled the apps and I'm going to click add to Chrome to add a, a, a small little extension that's going to be showing up right here. It's got the growth card logo so you can easily find it. And then I'm going to visit uh, an AliExpress store. Now the trick for this to work properly is really to go to the products that you're interested in. We're not really interested at AliExpress per se, but rather product on AliExpress. In this particular case, I'm going to search for, you guys probably guessed it already, a sock. So we'll have a nice uh, upsell product or, oh, I got everybody trying to sell me more product here, guys. Sorry. Oh, so I'm going to search for socks. And I'm going to pick the first one I find, guys. Okay. Why, not, why not search for unicorn socks? <laughs> ah, ah it's a unicorn one. store. Yeah, unicron. <laughs> did I misspell it? I sure That's did. Okay. Huh? That's all right. I'll give you a pass. Yeah, Google, it would have fixed it for me. <laughs> there we go. Boom, look at those little unicorn socks. How cute are those? Which I one like do we those. like? That, that one? I like those right there, yeah. Cool, so I'm going to click on them. Hey, I've got a secret for you guys who follow me on my webinars. I'm usually wearing unicorn slippers while I'm talking to you. Just saying. For some reason, I believe that. <laughs> so here I'm going to click on click to set up Ali Connect. Now, that you only have to do one time, folks. It's not a, something you have to do every time. But basically, you just want to tell AliExpress, hey, this is where my store is. I want to make sure you guys can talk together. So uh, I'm going to click uh, here. Then we're going to give you the three. That tells you where the store is. And we just have a username and password just for security purposes that we're going to need to add to it. So I'm going to go ahead and add. Basically, we're connecting AliExpress, what we're finding in AliExpress, in that, that store, to our um, GrooveCart store. And once you do that, you never have to do that again. That's what's wonderful about it. So once you do that connection one time, you're going to see a nice little button that says add product to groove card and that's all it takes so we're going to take a quick look at the product note all of the different variant right our buy price and then all of the description is coming from the seller so sometimes sellers do a good job at putting a description on aliexpress sometimes they do a poor job so make sure to take a quick look at that the quality of everything is going to depend on uh the qualities that the seller put into it and you should rewrite your descriptions and your titles because, uh, you know, they're non-English speakers, so you want to write it from a marketing perspective. So don't just copy and paste. You need to kind of drill in and, like, this wholesale 2017 new 3D printed women's socks. Unicorn's not even on that first five words, right? So rewrite exactly. everything in your store. And you know what, Barbara? I'm glad you brought that up because that's why we make the customer. We don't make it. You could click submit and go, but we suggested it right away. We put product name here. It's a quick reminder that you should really double, triple, and quadruple check that. Okay, so what did you do? You clicked on the groove cart button. Go slowly, but put your cursor up on the groove cart button. So I can see One that. more time. Uh, all that it took really is click on that button. Add product to groove cart in the upper right hand corner, that green button. Okay. Then pick a good title, right? Unicorn 
Uh, pink socks, maybe? I don't know. Is that different? Well, not pink because we'll probably have different mm -hmm. variants, but put unicorn socks. Then the price, leave it as it is on uh, AliExpress, okay? What it is is it's a different range of pricing that I might have based on the color, so we want to leave it there. And then look at that. All of our images can be all of the names. So second step, very difficult, is click Submit. <laughs> Wait a few seconds. Now satellites are leaking in outer space, and and stuff is moving all the way from China over to Matt. Are you French? I am. <laughs> we, we, so the French have a very dry sense of humor. Can you tell? We love Matt. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna fit in really well with the Deal Diva tribe. <laughs> and you know, one thing that I wish I would have done a, a little bit before is um, maybe set up a category, right, for socks and and products. So maybe we're gonna do that real quick, but. Uh, here you can set up uh, which category do you want it to be. Don't use home. Actually, I should have just set up a category for socks and maybe one for pyjama, right? No, okay. Visibility available everywhere. And you can actually tell the system, hey, I want you to quadruple the pricing every time automatically or double the pricing, right? You don't want the price to be the same as AliExpress. You want it maybe to be increased by 300%, right? At least oh, that's cool. The purchase price. So you can do 500. Uh, unfortunately, I... I Ian set that up before I did the import, so it's not going to work for this product, but the next one we're going to test is going to work perfectly. And then look at that. If you go to your um, AliExpress module, you're going to see that now the product is now part of GoofCard, right? So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, go to AliConnect, and then here this is going to be kind of your dashboard, your management console for everything that's happening with um, AliConnect uh, on AliExpress. So here, I know I have a new product. I'm simply going to approve it. Okay, you have to go through a quick approval process. Some merchant like it, some merchant don't want it. So we might look at it both way, but uh, or, or making it automatic. Okay, so on that status, you there was a little green X. You just clicked on that. Right. Oh, it was a red X, and I'm clicking it. It's going to come. Uh, it's going to become green. So. Um, and so we'll wait a couple seconds. That's where a lot of magic is taking in place right now. It's funny. You know, it'd be helpful because I wouldn't, that's not very intuitive. I, I wouldn't have known yeah, I know it. that status, maybe. I know it. I know it. We're probably going to try to make action it there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Click me. <laughs> Click here to be approved or something. Do you need to take a break, Matt? No, I'm okay. I'm just changing the chair. My butt was hurting there. Oh, I understand. I understand. So now if you click product, you're going to see, um, I didn't realize everybody could see me. <laughs> you're going to see your two products. Now you get your socks. Uh, you remember I, I, I didn't tell the system to update the pricing automatically. So I'm going to take yeah. a quick look at this product. If you want to make any changes, everything is set up perfectly there, right? So here in this particular case, I'm going to look at my variant and look at that. They're all there. The but the selling price says 89 and we didn't, didn't we set it up cheap. automatic to do um uh, we did we did 500%. but the problem is yeah the problem is i did the import prior to me uh putting that setting so okay so where do we before you import from aliexpress do we have to create a new product and then set the price yeah what's the proper how do you want us to do it? <laughs> next time, it's going to take place automatically because I'd spend a couple seconds here setting it up properly. And I'll show you that here in a second. But look, okay. we, got the, uh, we got the sock, right? Um, and if you click preview, look at that. I mean, how long did it take? While talking, while explaining, it took all but maybe five minutes to do this. That's thing. crazy. And look at yeah. all the mirror. Oh, my gosh. This is brilliant. I love this. Okay, now think about it, guys. I know there's somebody out there thinking, yeah, but who's going to find my store? This is where you start getting into sending traffic from Facebook, from Instagram. Where it Tell me that you guys couldn't create a Facebook page for unicorn socks, just for so unicorn apparel, and create an entire um, uh, print-on-demand and uh, AliExpress dropshipping store just with apparel with unicorns or skulls or llamas or whatever else on it. On the odds are, if you advertise this unicorn pyjama on a Facebook group that loves unicorns, you're going to move a lot of them, too. I buy those socks. <laughs> so, um, definitely will advertise on your wall, this right? website. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up uh, one more just to show you guys really how quick it is when we're not talking. And I'm going to talk a little bit. So, I'm going to pick up now, uh, I don't know, which one do we like there, Barbara? You know more, but... That one in the middle. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, 15 colors. Okay. That one. So you choose it. I don't like the price on that, though. 
You don't? How much is no. that one? Okay. No, ah, dollar thirty-eight. I don't like the price either. But uh, so I'm gonna scroll down, make sure everything looks good, right? Make sure this is a product you want to import. And then, guys, watch this. This is really how long it takes. It's, I'm gonna click on Add Product to Groove Cart. Do your title, right? So Unicorn Socks Two, maybe just come up with a better name, right? Or, uh, then look at that. Everything is there. Click Submit. Now we're gonna to have to do that one thing that people tend to forget from time to time, which is go back and enable the product. So we're gonna to have to wait, unfortunately, for, for this to, to finish, right? It's a lot of images, I think it's part of the reason. So is there a way to have um, a pop-up come up saying, remember to enable your product, or click here to enable your product? That's a great idea, yes, uh, thank you. Um, I actually, I think we're gonna do it simply automatically where you don't even have to worry about Where it automatically clicks for us to request the approval would be awesome. Yeah, exactly. We're going to do that. And then I think we're going to. So where did you go? You went to Alley Connect. Right. And just cling that. Uh, and that. you're clicking on the, the green X. Okay. So yeah, to have that, right. auto, that little step right there automatically done by the system would be um, really helpful. So guys, I also, I know that some of that stuff doesn't look perfect, you know, uh, on top of each other, but I'm working from an iPad, which is, if you ask me, it's not too bad for, for a back office for a small iPad. Yeah, thank you so much for, and by the way, he's just flown into town um, to meet with the GrooveCart team, so, uh, you know, he's traveling and, and doing this demo for us, so thank you, Matt, for taking the time. Yeah, no, anytime, Barbara, of course. And if you click on product, guess what, now I have uh, that product, now I think we have set up once and for all that it should multiply the price by three. So I'm sure it did it by now. The system is not smart enough to put maybe psychological pricing. So it just multiplied by three. So now our product is 828 in terms of pricing. Maybe you can uh, change it a little bit and, and adapt it. But uh, at least it did that first task, which was to multiply the price. By wow, three. that's brilliant. We're going to do a uh, psychological pricing. So I'm going to make this product, um, so basically, guys, what, when he says psychological pricing, what he did, he chose all product, and he wants to make the, um, this is what they normally sell for, field, that one right there next to the 994, which is 1998. He wants to just dump that price in there. Right, and also, you know, usually 994, 997 is better than 828, you know, in terms right. of the pricing as well. And then here we're going to do a couple things. Now, this is where we're going to take everything to the next level, right? Uh, I'm going to click... Um, I'm going to click uh, on App Manager at the bottom of the screen here. This is this, this Zoom stuff sometimes is bothering me a little bit. Sorry, guys. So App Manager. And then now we're really going to take it where uh, this is what's going to help you make so much more money than Amazon. We're going to do a few call apps, okay? It's going to take us maybe five minutes to set up, and you're going to have an incredible store. We're going to put a countdown timer, okay? Countdown timer is saying, hey guys, uh, if you buy within um, you know, the next 12, whatever many minutes, uh, you're gonna have a discount, something that Amazon doesn't allow you guys to do. Uh, and if you want to, you can use it, or you may not use it, but I'm gonna turn it on on, on everything now just to, uh, to load this store up real quick. We're gonna create a bundle product as well. Ooh, I like that. Hey guys, now all of, all of these apps that you're seeing in, in other platforms, you have to pay like extra amount of money for one time or monthly to use these added value apps where GrooveCart, they're all automatically included with your annual fee. So um, this is a crazy deal. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of features. So here we're going to put maybe a, oh, I don't know, I know what we're going to say, get a better deal. Maybe if you buy. Uh, background. I'm not going to worry about it because we're. Uh, so if, if anybody, if you've ever gone to a store and uh, you're ready to um, leave that store, and suddenly this little wheel pops up on the side of the screen that says, "But wait, spin the wheel and get a percentage off." Um, that's the kind of uh, that's called an app, right? So you can do fun stuff like if you go to GrooveCart, um, you go to uh, Groove uh, uh, Deal Diva Groove dot com and. Um, you'll see uh, a little thing pop up saying, this person just bought, this person just bought. That's an app that brings up that information. So you can do all that kind of stuff in your, in your GrooveCart store. Well, let's do it. Let's turn on the wheel then. I think I love the oh, idea. Oh, we have a wheel? <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, of course. 
Let me down. see. Where's my wheel? Spin wheel. I wasn't going to turn it on, but I think I want it so bad. Here you can <laughs> configure when it's going to come on and not turn on. My favorite, personally, Barbara, is not to always show the wheel. It's only to show it if a customer is going to leave. So I'm going to pick what looks good with a unicorn. Do we have pink? Yes, we do. Boom. There we go. We're going for the pink <laughs> color. Real design. I like this one. And then I'm going to say... Um, you know, uh, Wait, so you can have two wheel. different wheels. Yeah, well, you can have a different wheel within a different background. Oh wow! And you can offer a coupon, for example, if somebody wins a wheel. And here you can set up all your probability. Look, I've seen so many merchants do like eighty percent chance of losing and twenty percent chance of win winning. It makes no sense to me. I make everybody a winner personally. Right. Yeah, so, I would. The not lucky today and oops, sorry. I would take those out of there. I don't want anybody leaving my store. Totally. So you do want to you you do want to keep them there, right? Because you want people to think there are chance, you know, different prices. But at the end, make the gravity one hundred percent on the best offer you have, right? Oh, so the gravity is the chance that you have basically if you buy a lottery ticket and you see the on the back of the lottery ticket tells you the chance you have of winning. Um, that's the yeah. gravity, right? So okay. here, gravity, uh, we should probably change it to probability, maybe a better word. But here it says 35 times out of 100 is going to fall on this label. 10 times out of 100, that's where it's going to fall Very on. Very cool. Now, on your side, you can tell, Barbara, it looks real. It looks like it's spinning and slowing down. It looks pretty cool. Uh, and here, I usually set it up for, you know, only if somebody's going to try to leave, right? So who to show, not all visitors. I'm only going to show it if I got a feeling somebody is leaving. Um, hmm. You know, after add exit right here, boom, one exit. And maybe, you know, I'm not going to show returning visitors. Heck, if they're coming back to buy product, I'm not going to show yeah. that to them, right? So wow. uh, here, uh, I'm going to show it immediately so you guys can get a feel for it. And I'm going to save that. So now we got a little quick wheel set up. Um, so guys, we're going through a lot of stuff. It's because we can do so much, right? If you want to do social proofs, that's when there's something at the bottom left that says so-and-so bought it from that location a minute ago. But so this is all stuff that you guys can get in. And the purpose of this, um, this demo was to show you how to set up three things, your own products, print-on-demand products eventually, and uh, AliExpress dropship products. So you can go in and play with all of these apps and all these little add-ons at your leisure, okay? I don't want, I want I don't want to make Matt like go through all of these. We'll we'll show a couple for fun, um, but uh, it's mostly just to get you started setting up for your first store. Exactly. So here I went on and I turned on every app. Okay, that's uh, you guys might want to see uh, what's better for you, but uh, I'm going to show you what it what it kind of looks like here. By the time, uh, you know, I like to say. It. So here I'm uh, playing with the logos that kind of, you know, is going to be on your pages and it's going to huh. show up to make your customer feel a little bit more comfortable. Are those because images a default in GrooveCart? You can, yeah, you can pick the one you like best, right? And you can uh, check right here where you want them. Do you want it in a product page, a shopping page? Right, I'm sorry. The, those image files, are they already in GrooveCart or do we need yes, to they are. Oh. they are. And Great. you can even put an outline around it, which I like to do that. I'll show you guys why in a second. So here I created this product. I created uh, all of our uh, store layout. Now let's take a look at another um, one more time at the product. So for example, I'm going to look at uh, my PJs here. After you click on a product, you always need to wait about 45 seconds before you open it because it's generating everything we just added. But let's, let's actually, let's make it fun at the meantime. So bundle, what am I going to bundle the PJ with? Well, we said we would do it with the socks, Barbara, right? Yep. So oh, maybe no way. Thing. Yeah, and maybe offer 5% off if you buy both right now. A bump, I can try a bump. Now, guys, it doesn't make sense necessarily to do everything. So I actually never try to put uh, everything together, but... Uh, we're going to try it anyway. Create this big old landing page here. I'm going to pick the other socks. Maybe up just to see what it looks like. Um, you can decide to enable the product image or not when you do a bump. And I'll tell you guys why. Because if you sell a warranty, you don't want to show an image of a warranty. So you will turn that off. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to set up the one on the product page with an image and the one on the checkout page. You can even do a bump on the checkout page, just like Amazon. That one I'm going to set up with no image. So I'm going to pick another product uh, as well. And I'm putting some text that doesn't necessarily make sense, but it's okay. Oh, and I'm going to pick that. And there we go, guys. One click up sale. 
we're going to say, hey, after I sell my product, do I want to show some additional product? Well, yes, you do. If they didn't buy the socks, go ahead and show them. You know what? Let's show them every socks we have available. Okay. <laughs> Matt, and, so much fun doing this. You can tell, right? <laughs> and then countdown timer and product page. That's fine. Maybe you know what? Let's do a discount till midnight because at midnight now, don't say the pricing. So price expired at midnight, but say price guaranteed until midnight, which means after midnight, still the same price, but you guaranteed till midnight. Um, and that's it, really. Now, you guys are not going to believe what you're about to see. This is a completely different experience. You ready? I'm going to click preview. Usually when I say something like that, I, it all acts funky. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. And I'm going to, let's look at it, what it would look like on a mobile. So look at that now. You got your images. You can pick your color and your size or get a better deal. Are you kidding me? Why? What happens if I click get a better deal? It's that. The problem is that it's not a real mobile, so it doesn't Oh, got it. Uh, it doesn't look as cool as it would on a mobile. But look at that, guys. So here, if I click get a better deal. Oh, man. Scratch and find <laughs> it. Now, we can oh set God, up a, a different one. Uh, anything you like, you can scratch and actually get a better offer. I'm that's hilarious. Is that, that's an app that you added, right? Right, and it actually works uh, in converting a lot. So here, I think one of one of the things that I did that's probably creating a little bit of a mess is I did every single upsell option, and you don't want to do that because it's no. not going to help you uh, sell terribly. But yeah, it's going to slow down your page. You can only scratch with your mouse, your finger, and you want. Okay, that's hilarious. Oh, I love I that. <laughs> oh, my God, so, I love that. Um, Look at that, 105 people are watching. Now, if you want to do the bump upsell, you can just click that. It's setting an additional. Look at that that we added there. So I wouldn't do all of this because you're going you're yeah, gonna, to. Uh, a confused mind doesn't buy as a marketing maxim. So you, you don't want to hit them with everything all at once, as fun as it is to play with. <laughs> yeah, but we added them all here. So here, notice that I added one of the products uh, as an upsell. And then all you got to do really is just uh, add to cart and then it's going to go... Uh, and then, I, I mean, we can keep going. Look at that. I never added the socks already, so it's still offering them to me right here uh, because I, adding them, I didn't add the other matching one that I could. So that's my bump up sell, right? Interesting. Uh, and actually, if I remove this, then it might even offer them back if I go back. So let's, uh, let's buy our PJ here. I didn't buy the sock. I think I don't have a payment uh, solution set up. Let me, uh, I'm going to set you guys, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a payment solution. That's and good. You, Thank you. You can sell right off the bat. So... And look um, at that, where it says look at unicorn socks, what you, you could do, guys, he just put look at in a field just to get it done, but you put um, add these matching, add these matching uh, products to your order. Yeah, I don't even know how I, I came up with such a useless That's okay, thing. you were just trying to fill up. It's all good. So how do we set up to like the, the end step? How does somebody buy from us? Yeah, so look. Um, or do you want to show us uh, the print on demand stuff first? It's up to you. So we have another app that really, I'm going to demo the checkout from somewhere else because we never set up a credit card processing account or PayPal or anything. And it would take a couple yeah. seconds to get it, but uh, it's very easy to do. And also remember that checkout page, I'm going to show you guys something here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to go to my own little store where I got some fake payment provider set up and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to set up, uh, you have different ways of taking payment from your customers. So one way is, for example, um, Stripe. So you have to open an account with Stripe. It takes a couple of minutes to go. Um, or you, you should also offer PayPal, right? Because some people, for some weird reason, always want to purchase with PayPal. And I'm going to have to move and plug that computer. And the other option that you have as well is to take payment through uh, payment processing. So either, you either have your own payment processor I would be happy as well to help you set that up uh, so that you can get like cheap, cheap uh, credit card processing, right? And uh, but while, Matt, while Matt is moving his computer, just uh, fill in the blanks a little bit, especially if you're new to selling, um, you know, you're new to business, make, you don't want to commingle funds. And by that, I mean, you want to, don't use your personal PayPal account, all right? You want to set up a separate PayPal account using a business email address, a business address um, that is linked to your business credit card, your business bank account, so don't use your, your personal PayPal address as your uh, payment um, receiving email on your GrooveCart store. That'll just create a mess for your bookkeeper at the end of the day. Um, so set everything up like a business in the beginning. And uh, I'm, I don't have a Stripe account yet, but I am going to go sign up for one this week to um, also incorporate Stripe um, with, uh, with Groove, my GrooveCart store so people have a couple of different options. How are you doing, Matt? 
I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks. And uh, also, once you do a little bit of volume, get your own processing because Stripe is so expensive, right? Yep. So um, here, so look at that. This is a, a checkout page on my store. Okay, but look at that. I did a few things. One, I did a, an hour app can do that in two clicks, but look, I did something here. You won. Uh, you can have a, so here you can say, congratulations, you are um, the ex visitor of the day, uh, coupon code 28. And so, for example, you can give an extra 5% off or something to keep your customer like, oh my God, uh, if I don't buy it now, I'm losing that coupon opportunity, right? So there's a little app that lets you change what's here. Um, the text here doesn't make any sense, but usually I would say, congratulations, coupon code 10% off. And then people can add it. And look at that. On your page here, I added why chose us, right? Three little things about why people should buy from you. And some reviews. This will dramatically increase your conversion rate on mobile. And it's uh, something you cannot do with some other competing. Look at that. That's our checkout on mobile, guys. I'm not going to bother you with a bunch of stuff. I don't have to, right? I'm going to go straight to trying to get your information. That little truck converts so much better just because somehow people don't feel like they're spending money. They're just worried about how you're going to get it to them and so on. So uh, let's continue here. I'm going to actually pick a different product just to show you what the upsell would look like because this is one of the greatest features. So I'm, I have a product here that I've set up that I know. So nothing makes sense, guys. Let me tell you. <laughs> here you got a picture of ferrets, cats, and dog, and uh, it doesn't make sense because it's been a, a store that I've used to churn merchants. This and is here, gonna, a demo store, guys. He's just in, this, this is his, uh, his um, sample. My play store, yeah. I test the dev, I test a lot of stuff that we do from here. So I'm adding this product to my shopping cart here. I'm changing it from uh, the toad. Here we get another app that pretends like you might have found a you might have found a coupon for you. That's another thing that can help you uh, really uh, increase your sales. And here we go. So here the system is kind of smart. So usually able to read cookies, which can even speed up the checkout. Doesn't always work, but sometimes it does, where you can put minimum information and it fills up your cart. Uh, and look at that. There's something that seems you know minor, but. I'm not bothering people with, so this can be removed easily, right? We're testing it, and this is my test store, but usually we put it underneath the checkout button so that I'm not even letting you wonder about it, right? And this is gonna increase your conversion rate as well. And meet all legal requirements from GDPR and the US requirements. If shipping is zero, we can actually skip this page completely as well. It's gonna pick up your name from your checkout page. Look at that. Your customers will love this because they feel like they're really shopping securely. A little trick of the trade to increase your sales and look at that what do you guys think is going to happen if I click complete purchase oh we're, hey what about blades for my drone right so here you can come up with a nice description and you should you should put hey but wait you know if you purchase in the next five minutes you should have a text similar to exceptional offer for you today with your purchase right but just to show the functionality, look at that. It's right here. I can add that one to my order. Maybe I want to say no thank you to the next one. This is incredible, guys. If you sell widget A, you can now add widget B after the sale. And that's going to increase your sale. So, and we can keep going all night. So maybe we're going to stop now. <laughs> and even if I close, close my browser, guess what? The so sale is going to get registered. Okay. And it's going to show up right here as part of your orders. And wherever the process stops. Uh, it's still going to be there. So we'll give it a few seconds. There's going to be a cron job and the sale is going to show up right here. Um, so to set up your, uh, I'm going to go back to our, our, our stores that we're working on with Unicorn. And, um, you know, the only things you have left really is kind of show your product on your homepage. Well, up. where is this 50% off clearance banner coming from? Ah, it's coming from us. Not the most pretty banner. And the idea is to force you to change it. So I figure if I do something red and blue, <laughs> I will get you to change it. Um, I just put change this banner, put your banner here. <laughs> yeah, I want you to put a little, yeah, maybe I could put the, <laughs> that might be a good idea. So I think that would make Mike happy. Um, so let me go to uh, your administration area. Oh, where is it right here? Yeah, we already have it open. I think we're open it's yeah. uh, not too complicated. Go to page and layout. It's actually super easy to do. Where is that uh, banner? It's on the home page. So I'm going to click home page. Okay. And then here you can select whether you want to show some category on your home page or want to show some product, right? So for example, here I'm, uh, you can say these are the product I want you to show on the home page. If you want to put some straight HTML or create some beautiful images and put all that stuff on your homepage, you can do that here. 
and say whether you do it before or after the slider. And if you want to change your sliders, you just click here and look at that. We're going to find our big, ugly red guy. Maybe add a new one. With a bit of luck, I got a couple sliders that I've done for merchants that I can pull from. Uh, let me see. So the sliders, this is the one thing that doesn't get resized uh, on our software because we want you to be able to decide if you want a big or small banner. My biggest advice is make sure to keep everything above the fold. The fold is what you see first when you get on a website. Make sure that you start showing product before you scroll down, before you have to scroll down on most monitors, right? If you guys are familiar with the, the term above the fold, it comes from the newspaper world. Remember back in the day when we had newspapers and then you get it and you'd open it up and there's two sides. There's the one you see and then when you flip it over or you open it up, it folds down, right? So you're going to see the most important stuff above that fold and that terminology translated over into e-commerce. So it's what you see, not see on your screen before you scroll down is above the fold. You can point your banner to a specific page. So for example, if you have a big banner about promotions on a unicorn product, you can actually just point to it, right? So people can click on the banner. Here I added a tool that um, I suggest using with caution that lets you put stuff on top of your banner. So if you wanna, if you wanna add text, if you wanna add images on top of your banner, you can do that here, but I, it's usually not a good idea. You should do everything within your banners, just in case of emergency, if you wanna modify something, you can do it, but not necessarily a good practice in general. Just a lot of customers wanted it, but I don't think it's the best idea. And look at that now. I put in a huge banner. Oops, I enabled it, but it's gonna be in second place, so we're not gonna see it right away. Here we go. Just to, uh, just, you know, a huge banner here. Okay. Um, and Is there a way to take that banner off altogether and not have a banner? Absolutely, we just click the off button. So I'm gonna create a quick categories and I'm gonna remove these banners and add a product. So here we said maybe we should have a category about pajama. It's usually good to, for your category to be um, like pajama, socks, shoes, right? right? Right, And you want your, then you want to be your collection or your type of product to be like, you know, unicorns or monkeys or whatever that would be, right? If you need to do a second kind of placement. So here I'm gonna do socks real quick because that's the two type of products that we carry. And it's very powerful for SEO as well to do that. And here you can set up your meta titles for each product. So I don't need to see nothing from AliExpress. I need to see print on demand. And I'm gonna look at my two products and I'm just gonna categorize them properly because it's gonna become a much more powerful tool. Okay, so you're assigning categories to our products. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. And I, it's a good place to start, usually to start with category rather than product. But in this particular case, I think which one were we looking at? We're looking at the pajama, so I'm gonna add it here. Simply click here, and then this is gonna be my main category. You can, a product could belong to several categories. Why do you so click on the left and the right? Oh, because the right-hand side is main category? Right, so that one's gonna be like, uh, this is a category, it can belong to several categories. But only one for SEO purposes can be a main okay. category. And then always remember to hit save, guys, and before you move out of that page or you lose the work that you're working right. on. We used to have it all done in JavaScript where you didn't need to click save. And you should see how many people come back to us and say, oh, I made a mistake and it saved it. So now we decide, hey, you got to constantly just make the effort of clicking save. And that means you have changes and, and you're going to keep them. Again, he's going into one of our products and he's going to choose socks, I'm guessing. Yep, me too. There we go. Yes, there, there we go. Make it the main. That little button makes it the main category that it's in. Or the default category, I'm sorry. Yeah, correct. The default or main, yeah. Is there... Okay. And I'm just like reiterating. I know, Matt, you're saying all this, but, uh, you know, I'm just saying it again. As you, as you do it, I'm following your cursor and explaining it to myself and hopefully to everybody else, too. Yep, thank you. So here, uh, I'm going to say, you know what, on the whole page, these are the two categories I'm interested in. Sometimes you can create a category called, um, you know, deal of the day or... Um, oh, interesting. And, and kind of create even more traction from your customers. So you could actually, guys, do it like a daily deal site. How fun would that be? Where you can yeah. um, make one of your products the deal of the day 
and get buzzed to get people wanting to come back every day that deal goes live at like 6 a.m. Eastern or something like that, right? I just thought that'd be fun to try. And here you can set up how your homepage is going to look like, how many products per lines and that kind of stuff. It doesn't take very long to do. It's self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend uh, uh, too much time on it. And here it says here, make sure it's three. So we're going to put. Do you want to see what, you know, what categories are going to be shown on the homepage? That's what he's doing now. And he's doing yep. all this in the configure uh, under, is that under store configuration? Matt? It's under uh, page and layout. And that's where you can set up. Uh, so right now he's under store configuration and then pages and layout right below that. Right. Exactly. We're basically, we're just fine tuning now of how we want our store to look. Yeah, we're basically creating the, uh, the home page. Now, don't worry if it takes you guys longer or me longer to do it the first time around. Matt's been doing this a while. <laughs> he knows the system. So just yeah, I think that, exactly. So can't I really break know. anything. But let me show you. I'm going to show you a couple things now. Now that we have the page. Awesome. I'm going to click on View Diva Demo. And you notice here, oh, I forgot to remove the slider, but I do have my product now showing. Now, it doesn't look like there's a million product. Guess what? Because we only added a couple product. Okay. Um, and if you want to completely change the look and feel of your store, you can click on that little wheel. And we give you three pre-made layout style. Now, we're, um, we're going to come up with, oh, look at that. Our, our little social proof just started here because we bought it a second ago in testing. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to pick a, a different look and feel. So for example, if I do number two, uh, it looks similar to another website that you guys have been shopping from a lot. Similar is a keyword here. And look at that, a completely different layout for your store. Okay. And if you look at the product page, it's going to have a different layout configuration. And we did that by just clicking, you know, a, a different, uh, and then we have one more that looks even more familiar with the page that you guys spend a lot of time with color wise look at that up oh, should looks fairly familiar to you guys it looks yeah i like the better. i like the product pages the home page is not really floating my boat it needs some design help yeah it's the only reason is because we got two products right and so one thing that's super super important in e-commerce is to have a lot of product right that's okay. why amazon when you go on their web page and you load and let me show you for example we got several uh let me, this is a, a store that I use for testing. So this is, this used to be a, a um, look how much better it looks when you have a store that's loaded with product, right? You do a nice little banner. Okay, so that's your banner. That looks nice. Okay, and right. then this is your, right below the banner, these are the categories. Hang on. So just putting product, this is what we get. Let's take it section by section. Yep, my bad. Banner, <laughs> and then right below the banner, right below there, scroll down a little bit. These are your categories. Category. Okay, and then right below that is like a list of the today's deals. Oh, I see. Is that a plug-in, the today's deals? No, it was just a category name, really. That was a category. Okay, interesting. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. And look at that. So, uh, yeah, if you add more product, it's so much easier to do a normal demo, right? Um, and again, remember, it takes you one minute to add a product from AliExpress, right? If you yeah. want to. Uh, if you need to just have stuff to complement your store. And maybe I'm going to do the demo here about how... Um, as a, as a look and feel really makes a difference with one click. It makes more sense here. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, I appreciate that. Having, having a half a product on the, a half a product on the home screen didn't really make sense. But here I yeah, can. Yeah, I know. I know you're used to seeing, like you know, we just kind of wanted the the basics of getting started. But I know it's not going to look the way we want it to look unless it's fully blown out. So thanks for now, showing. guys. I have a story for you guys, and uh, oh, I'm going to click save. So many merchants are so worried, Barbara, about the look and feel of their store, about everything looking exactly the way they've dreamed of since they were little kids, about the colors <laughs> being perfect. Look at that here. It's looking a lot more, uh, yeah. very different, right? About everything looking a specific way. But this is not how we design GrooveCart. We didn't design GrooveCart ways. I want to give you a tool that is going to make your store look exactly uh, the way you want it to look, right? We designed a tool where Everything that's within GrooveCart has been tested, tested, and retested. Meaning, there's a reason we're using that font here. There's a reason that this is the color of that price and that one, even though you can change it. This is a reason everything is located in a special place because everything has been A-B tested, and we know that this is where you have the highest probability of selling, right? 
So the, the checkout page is not like, oh, I think I just want it there. No, we've tried checkout page with or without telephone number, with or without email address, with or without uh, showing things in different order, right? We, we've tested everything on a checkout page to know what was the ideal checkout page down to uh, the location of every single block. And it's the same for your product page. So the idea behind us is to create a tool that's going to help your merchant sell more and be more successful, meaning having a better conversion rate, right? That means how many people are buying from the number of visitors, but not necessarily based on, oh, I, that's exactly how I want my store to look like, right? Well, and Matt, it seems to me that when I, when I do it, a Facebook ad um, or any ad, I'm not driving traffic to go and see my store. I'm driving traffic to an item page, to a product page. I, totally, 100%, that is true. And then it's all about what can I do to help you maximize your sales. So for example, I'll give you one little tiny example that you can do with a competing product. You see here, have a discount code, that increases your conversion rate by half a percent. Huh. Half a percent means every 100 customer, every 200 customer, one more sales you're gonna have. And do you know why? Because this is what is happening to one out of every 100 customers. And I know you guys have done that before. I see a discount box I'm gonna go. I like, gotta search for. Oh, <laughs> let me go find a discount. And guess what? Goodbye, you lost the sale, right? So by just doing that little act where you have that little plus, first of all, you can make it disappear completely on GrooveCart. Like if you don't want to show discount, you're not. But if you are going to show discount, let's just make it something that if you look for it, you'll find it, but it's not going to jump at you and tell you, hey, you got to go somewhere and find a discount, right? Uh, these are some examples about things where we took your conversion rate and then what the uh, testing told us was better to do rather than taking what we feel looks nicer. I've seen people have stories, and I promise you this is true, with um, m like a horrible maroon at two card button. But if you turn it to a green or a vulture color, it will increase your conversion rate by 0.1 to 0.2%, right? So if you just do that add to discount button, and if you just change the color of it, well, that's 0.7%. And guess what? You remember that little shopping cart we had here? Yep. On that store, that's usually 0.3%. And so if you add everything together, you have a chance at, at selling at a conversion rate of around 7 to 8% rather than a half a percent. So in the United States, the average rate is about 1.28% conversion. If you set up your group card properly and you drive relevant traffic, we should be able to get you around 7 or 8%. We have customers doing it right now. And that's why we've laid out everything the way it is. Okay, so I want to encapsulate this down and, and kind of reiterate a little bit to, um, to let you know how important what Matt just said is. GrooveCart is not just some other, you know, some shopping cart program. Blah, blah. They, it's backed by people who understand marketing and have done a bunch of testing on what converts the traffic you're sending to your site or to your product page. It converts it to more sales, higher ticket, repeat customers, um, more so than other shopping carts, all right? So they've done the back-end research from a marketing standpoint and incorporated all of those little psychological um, things that make us as consumers, me too, I do it. If I see that little spin wheel, I spin it, and I'm much more likely to buy if I see it. That little flashing, this is a hot item, check out fast before you know, you've got 18 minutes to check out. I'm, I'm the one that that's gonna motivate to check out faster. So these things work and these guys have been tested it and incorporated it into the GrooveCart system automatically without any extra fees on the back end for, you know, modules or apps or whatever. So I just wanted to reiterate what Matt said is this is a, this is an important thing. Okay. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> yeah, and I, I guess I can, unfortunately, um, I can show you all the feature of GrooveCart in one call. That's okay. We're and not, yeah, and we're not thing. trying to get everything. We're just trying but to get But I want to show you one more. I just can't help it. Uh, we're going to, we're going to spend New Year's here. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, print gonna, on demand. Tell, tell us what GrooveCart can do. And I'm not sure what you've rolled out yet, um, but tell us what we can do with print. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. So let me, I'll, I'll tell you about one thing because I was getting excited here and now right I can't help it. I'm like Mike, but you see the button card button right here. We have a system where you can tell us, we can tell GrooveCart, hey, after half an hour, consider a shopping cart a button if the customer got here and didn't buy it. So if a customer comes on your website, they spend a half an hour looking at product and they add stuff to cart and they leave, wow, that's an abundant shopping cart. Well, we're not gonna let it be like another stat, right? We're gonna try to capture information about the customer. 
So one, we have that wheel. If he starts to check out, we've got information about him. We have several tools where we can set up a bunch of emails to the customers. And to make a long story short, we can set up a sequence. And I'm gonna say, I tell you what, after one hour that the customer leaves, I'm gonna send him an email and say, hey customer, come back to the website, complete your purchase. And if within maybe five hours, I don't get that customer back, maybe I can say, I tell you what, Mike, let me give you 5% off, come back. And if that doesn't work, maybe 24 hours later, I'm gonna send uh, an email to the customer and say, okay, listen, Mike, you're a tough negotiator and I really love to earn your business, let me give you 10% back. So we give you all the tools to do that where you don't have to go out and spend money with a third party and that kind of stuff as well. So how are you capturing the email addresses? Is there a pop-in box or? Something similar where I can put water in it. I'm sorry, uh, Barbara. No, get, get Matt some, go ahead. some water. Take, do what you gotta do, Matt. Uh, he's giving me a, a quick lunch. Um, Good. Okay, and uh, so you said print on demand. <laughs> well, hang on, well, how, do, how are you capturing the email address? Is that an so app? We got, yeah, we got several ways of doing it, right? So we remember that little wheel we were talking about? Yeah. Oh, uh, they have to enter their email to get it? Okay. You know what? I yeah. think, yeah. Matt, what we'll do is we'll set up a second email for um, like advanced marketing guru Thank kind you. of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let's do a, se a second one so we're not like doing a three-hour demo here um, uh, where we can just hone in on like ninja marketing stuff. So for now, let's right. put a print on demand and we'll cycle back around and we'll do another training on Ninja Marketing and Groove Card. I love that. I love that. Cool. Plus, you can talk with one marketers. If we do that with Mike and John, this is going to take you to the next level. Oh, well. yeah. So you guys might be thinking, hey, um, why, you know, what can I sell? Well, man, we made that so easy for you. So we got this app here called Layer App. Uh, and you click on Layer and then pick, for example, from the products that we have here. Right, that Layer App offers you guys. Uh, and here's more, we have, we're adding one product a week right now. So for example, right now we see a lot of success in hooded blankets. I don't exactly know how it works. I think it's like a- It's a, a blanket with a hole in it. <laughs> yeah, but it's now. Um, and um, I know next week we're adding car seat covers, right? Hooded blanket. Oh, uh, you're adding um, car seat covers? We are. Oh, we are. man. Not selling that crazy, right? And we even have shoes. Check this out. So high tops. Uh, let's just try a shoe, right? Let's put For, some unicorns on some high tops. What do you think, girls? <laughs> so, uh, so look at that. Uh, I clicked a couple clicks, which basically I selected a white high top, all right? And I'm not. I'm gonna look. I don't know if I. Uh, have a, a design that would work well for unicorns. No, are these are these print on demand? Just use any design. It's okay. We'll imagine it's unicorns. Are these companies like in the US or where are they? The the company that's doing the product. Yeah. They're in China, which is China. It does. It, there's a couple of benefit and a couple downside to that. The biggest benefit is uh, actually the fact that it can uh, ship worldwide. And by the way, the price is there of layer app includes the shipping, so they don't charge anything extra for shipping or anything like that, which is really cool. And um, and so your pricing, your your price is very low. It, it took us, you should see how many different suppliers uh, we communicated with to try oh, sure. uh, to do layer app. Well, how, how long does it take, I guess what I was getting at is, how long is it gonna take for people to get their product? So usually it takes about 15 to 21 days, okay? okay? Um, so as long as we communicate that, so there's a couple of things. One is you want to uh, communicate it. And the other thing is you got to keep in mind, these are, you know, there's products they will not find anywhere else, not find anywhere else whatsoever. Mm -hmm. For example, I don't know, think about um, in October, you can do a, you can do like a breast cancer uh, design. Uh, right. Autism months. You can do, for example, uh, you remember when there was a whole thing about the, what was the thing where people were ALS uh, pouring a bucket over themselves, right? Oh yeah, that idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. So we did a shoe, for example, that was uh, F U C K. No, excuse me, it was A. Should have said that. F U C and then a, a pink ribbon cancer. That uh, that sold like we crazy. Or something, something, I get it. Right. So let me see. I'm gonna pick just any design here. So what did we pick? I think we picked. Uh, we picked. And if um, you guys, if you guys are looking for special events to do print on demand, um, go check out. Uh, just finished it. It's, uh, oh, it's sellercalendar.com and uh, it's my 2019 event calendar with over 600 different events, everything from Shark Week to Meghan Markle's baby being born to a uh, TV show and launches and video game launches, movie launch, etc. 
And you can download that for free at sellercalendar.com. Okay, go ahead, Matt. Cool. All right. So then what you do is you come up with a design. It's usually you can do it yourself or you can find uh, people that do that for a living as well. Uh, sometimes Fiber, you can Upwork, go find a designer. Upwork, you name it. Yeah. yeah. And um, then go ahead and take your design and watch out. This is so complicated. You take <laughs> it and drag it over the shoe. <laughs> Such a wise this guy. When I pick a product that's the wrong dimension. When I say watch out, it's so complicated. <laughs> nope. Good dimension. Oh, cute. Good. Uh, this was our kitty cat. I'm going to pick up um, another one maybe. Let me see. Now, do you guys provide us a list of the dimensions needed for those images? Yeah, it's all right there, yeah. Oh, good. And so then, we can tell oh, our designers. Actually, oh, there it is right there. Really there. Oh, design. I'm so sorry, guys. It's an ugly design. Ugly design. It's adorable. Design. It's unicorn ah. colors. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I and mean, I know we had a couple of unicorns, I think. Um, not certain. but And then guess what? Um, that design, what do you guys guess? I want somebody to try to guess what else I have. Obviously, I have matching socks for it. I have the very course. same design. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, I got the socks, right? <laughs> and that socks, you can see the full face of the kitty cat there. I have it in low cup. I have it in backpacks. I have it in leggings, right? Because once I come up with a design, just change the size and you'll fit somewhere else, right? Even the pillow, look at that. So we can keep upselling, right, afterwards. Wow, so that's So then it's like, Hey, name the product, right? So I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to name that one. Um, maybe uh, on an iPad. It's not always easy to do. Oh, Two yeah. Cats. We understand. Right. There we go. Cat and high tops, right? Boom, boom, boom. Category. Well, that's going to be Collection. Be shoes, right? Unfortunately, we didn't add it yet. That's okay. You can, so we basically, you can we want to set up our party. categories. Before you start any adding any product to your store, set up your categories first. Right. Okay. And don't forget to tag it. I'll show you why. Right. And then you can do uh, you can do separate prices for all your product or, or different size. Some people charge more for larger. You can also set everything up by default so you don't have to re-enter it again and literally do that in one click. Um, one shoes like that, man, it's print. It's got your unicorn set. At least normally worth one nineteen ninety five, but today and today guaranteed low pricing till midnight for fifty nine ninety five. And let's publish this product and see what happens. Okay, so what if we wanted to create variants for that? No. Why? Oh, well, different sizes. You let the system Maybe do it why? automatically for us. That's why. I don't want to create variants. It's too complicated for sure. So I'm going to go to product. And guess what? We created all the variants for you. I go to cute cat. I don't know if it's the greatest name for the product. <laughs> But if you go over to variant, guess what? It's, it's all already there. And it's available. Yeah. Look, look at that. that. All right. I love that it has European and US sizes too. That's brilliant. Yep, it helps. It helps a little bit. Uh cool. and then what what do we want to do for this one? We wanna I think I gotta re-enter my compare ad price here. Fifty nine ninety five, perfect. Yeah, it didn't carry over from the product page. Yeah, somehow it didn't. That's something. It's probably a little bug. I got to look at. You'll fix it. Yeah, of course. And then, uh, do we want to do bundle? Well, yeah, that's great. So he clicked on product app. I'm not. She's. You're moving fast. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, guys. I'm so you sorry. Guys. Product app I'm, settings, right? From basic settings, and then you've got the menu bar at the top of the screen. And then you clicked on product app settings. Exactly. And here, well, you would bump. maybe do a dump, a dump um, excuse me, a bump for socks for $6. Maybe you can do a bundle. Uh, uh, maybe you can add some similar sneakers. Maybe, I mean, there's all kinds of things. Extra shoelaces. I mean, there's all sorts of things you can do. Yeah. But those yeah, products, in order to do that, those products need to be entered into your products first. Right. So this is what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to create one. And literally, instead of talking, I'm just going to do it to show you realistically how long it's going to take you guys after you practice it a couple of times, right? So let me see. So again, remember, whoops, I need me to click here. Sorry. I'm going to click over to... So remember, we're going to go all the way down to layer app. You see, I can't help talking. Choose my product. And I know I'm going too fast, guys, but I think it's kind of good to get an idea of what it really takes to create a product. Then now that I got the shoe, well, what can I do? It wouldn't make sense to do a matching sock. And by the way, what we're doing now to a lot of these products is we're adding 
Um, so let me see, finding the stock. We're also adding people on stuff on the images are being generated just to increase the sales. Ooh, I got an error message, wrong dimension. So maybe I don't have an at work for socks that will work, let me see. No, I didn't pick the sock, I picked some flippers, okay. Flip flop. I guess we can do some flip flops too. Uh, this is the Everyone wears socks with flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to offer swimming suits here very shortly. So that was the idea uh, to prepare for swimming suits as well, which is why nice. we're going to flip up and towels and all kind of stuff. Look at that. Literally, guys, all it takes now to get this product going is to click continue. I don't have to do anything here, really. It's all done automatically and publish product. I, I'm wrong. Sorry, guys. I have to put a pricing. So the only reason I have to do that is because I didn't spend the one second it takes to create default pricing for uh, the product. Uh, I could have done, uh, gone here and set up default pricing and I would never have to do that again. So literally, look how long it took guys after you have your one design to create the socks, right? So now uh, I missed the, price, the opportunity of creating the pricing automatically, so I'm gonna add it quickly. Uh, manage your variant. And I'm just gonna pick here. Uh, it's only two different things, small or, what is it, medium or large here. How much is the socks? Well, it's print on demand, so maybe $9.99. It's okay. Your purchase price is uh, less than six bucks. And it's an upsell product, so it's pure margin at this point. Wow. That's it. That's it. Uh, that's it. Really. This is so, wonderful. There we go. Oh, I never showed you the main product, but that's, we're never going to sell a sock, right? We're not going to drive traffic to sell a sock, but the idea was go to product. And the only reason we entered socks was to uh, add it as an upsell to our, okay. to our shoes. Thank you, Barbara. Go to product app settings. Then here, guess what? If you buy a sock and a pair of shoes, maybe we should give a little bit of a, ooh, let's use the right sock, right? That's the idea behind it. Have the matching socks, maybe offer... Uh, if you buy both, 10% discount. I want to change that only in percentage. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I'll fix it. Yeah, we're, just, we're trying to say, don't put a dollar amount. But yeah, we'll have to fix the wording a little bit. Um, well, I mean, tell us what that field is, because I, I, I wouldn't know what that field is unless you have a label that says, what percentage do you want to, or whatever. What yeah, you got it. Discount. We'll get that done by uh, by tomorrow. And then, guess what? If somebody doesn't buy it straight up, I'm still going to try to get it on upsell. Uh, so here, I'm trying to bump the stock, upsell the stock, do anything I can to have the stock. But what I would typically do is maybe um, maybe try different product to get the customer's attention. And then, what? Well, we're going to put a quick. That's it. Yeah, that's all it took to create this very very complex algorithm of bump product, upsell, cross-sell, all kind of cool stuff. Uh, and then no stuff programming up. required. There's no, I don't have to HTML, I don't have to like do anything in code. It's all done in the back end. I just need to learn the interface a little bit, but then boom, it just happens. Yeah, this is wonderful, thank you. So we've learned how to add our own products, wholesale products, private label, bundles, doesn't matter, how to um, do a print-on-demand, how to add multiple print-on-demands, and how to use AliExpress to import dropship products. Anything else you want us to know about before uh, we let you go? And what about if you have your own blog, for example? You can create a get by button. That is so cool. So, for example, we have a... We have a <laughs> Oh, there's just so many features we, we can look at. You get at so there. excited about it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, because the biggest thing is we see a lot of people, you know, that uh, are starting a new chapter in their life, right? They go from one point, they start selling more and more, and they, they now become our best friend. I mean, they, um, they have tremendous success doing it. So it's kind of cool. I really like it. Plus, it's kind of cool, you know, after being in e-commerce for so long to be on that end now of helping people out. I really enjoy it. Well, thank you, Matt. You and, and Mike and your whole team over there are just fabulous. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your uh, limited schedule here. No, uh, you're very welcome. And look at that. Look at this buy button. Ah, it's not turning This awesome to feature is <laughs> in de development. I love it. So coming soon is... Because it's already done. I just didn't open it. Drop your blog, 
right? So you can blog about unicorns, and then in that blog you say, hey, um, I've done a review of these really cool, you know, tennis shoes with unicorns on them, and um, you do a, a box opening video, right, and tying the shoelaces, and show your kid putting them on their feet, and then say, if you love these, buy now and get 10% off, and it, that little button sends you over to the product page on your, on your web store. Right, I can I can show it to you real quick. Uh, it's uh, it's actually done. It's the only thing we didn't do was to really work on the. We have the graphic designer that's supposed to come back and make it look a little bit nicer, but the feature is one hundred percent there. So I'll show it to you because it's so cool. Well, that's another thing I like about the Groovecart team is that you guys are constantly adding more features, more products, more development. Really streamlined all the time. All the time. All the time. So it's not just a static thing. Uh, and I'm guessing if I gave you a little laundry list of, could you do this? Could you do that? You guys would at least consider input from your customers. Yeah, so we have something really, really cool. Um, we, have, um, we have this tool where you can go in and put a feature request and then people vote on it. Oh, cool. And, and we simply go in the order in which it was voted. So it's not about, oh, this is hard to do. This is difficult. This is easy. It's simply. Is hey, that in the help desk or where, where would we? Right, I'll show you in a. Well, it's not in this store either. Woo! That's all right. You'll get there. So this, it's not released to the public you yet. You know what? We'll cover that in our marketing ninja thing, right? We'll cover yeah, that. Yeah, cool. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Webinar. Um, even though I was demoing it to Mike earlier this morning and he loved it. Um, so let me see. Yeah, if you go here, we so got. Here being, uh, where are you? There you are. Upper right hand yeah, corner. I clicked right here, guys. And then if you go to. Request um, a feature. Very cool. Where's the feature? Love it. So, for example, this oh, wow. is the next one. Continue shopping button or checkout. Oh, oh really. interesting. Like, instead of checkout now or continue shopping. Yeah, I, you see, so that's, I, I'll give you an example here. Barbara, you remember when we tell you at Group Card, we try, to, we try to help our merchant find out what's best for them. We have 27 merchants right now that so would love the option to have a button that says continue shopping and checkout. I love it. Every time we A-B tested it, left and right, up and down, this reduces sales. Brilliant. Um, but we're going to add it, and we're going to say, okay, here's your continue shopping button. We already have it, but in reality, we disabled it. But we're going to tell customer not recommended. So if something is not recommended, there's usually a good reason why, guys. Okay? Probably a marketing reason behind it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So here I'm going to click on uh, trending, and that's what we do all the time, top. And then sales channel. So look at that. It's now planned and being in a, in a work. So for example, Printify. Some people are asking us to integrate with Printify. We have a meeting tomorrow at 1 o'clock with Printify. Nice. And hopefully this is going to be done by uh, fairly quickly. We need tutorials, right? People need a little bit more help on some products. So I'm going to look into doing that. Link all legal pages. Legal. That's actually going to be done by tomorrow morning. Um, and then you'll find out that that buy button came from here. Recurring bill and subscription. It's going to be done. Um, it's going to be done. It's actually done. It's in testing already. Digital product. It's actually done. I forgot to mark it. So oh, cool. This one is actually done. So if you go into a Groove Cart now, you have the option for digital product. So we, we're the most dynamic e-commerce solution I've ever met personally. Uh, and I've worked at a couple. I was offered even a, a, a job to be a manager of a huge company in e-commerce and they weren't anywhere as dynamic as we are today. Well, go ahead and create a, a digital product for us. Oh, it's so hard to do, Barbara. Look at that. I'm going to click on set up product. There's that French sense of humor again. And that uh, crew socks. I'm just simply going to change it to, hey, it doesn't let me. Product type. Damn, ah, yeah. Good, it see. doesn't let me because I actually uh, already told you it was a physical product. So you so. create a new product and then choose product type digital. Cool. Yep, exactly. I think we named it. Uh, we would have been too smart to I'll name play with it. That. I think we named that's, that's, it. Another, that's another webinar. Cool. Well, Matt, is, are there any parting words, anything else um, to help somebody who's just getting started with Groovecart create the first store that we might not have covered? Um, can you give me just one split second? I'm going to look at one split second here. Of course. Let me get Mike here asking me something real quick. And again, guys, we're, um, we're, we're demoing like live in-person groove cart. Um, you can go to the deal diva groove.com. If you don't haven't already signed up for groove cart, go do it. Deal diva groove.com. G R O O V E. And, um, and okay, go grab this, this incredible backend e-commerce system. 
to get started selling your products on, you know, not just relying on one platform like Amazon, but selling your products on your own websites now. How you doing, Matt? Yeah, I'm so sorry. So I missed your question. I'm sorry. I'm Mike. Uh, okay. I was just asking you, do you have any last minute things? I think we've covered the basics of getting our first store up using our own products, print on demand and drop ship from AliExpress. Is there anything else for new newcomers that you want to cover? So I think I can tell you where we have the most positive feedback is absolutely in all the training sessions that we do. So I'll tell you the downside and the upside. We have customers telling us all the time, wow, just the webinars that you guys do is worth 10 times more. Even some people wrote down like thousands of times more than the, than the actual product. We have every Thursday, we're going to have three training sessions a week. Matt, have Matt, go ahead and, and turn off your, your, the share on your screen so we can talk face to face. There we go. Hey, all right, guys. Well, I can see where this wasn't messed Boom. up. Okay. So we've got, we offer at the very least three training a week. Okay. The first one is Welcome Wednesday, and that's for the new user. That's where we accept all the um, craziest question of all. <laughs> and it's somebody getting started in e-commerce, right? And that could be, I don't want to say getting started in e-commerce because it's really getting started in owning your own e-commerce store, right? You could be very successful on Amazon. I'm going to help you in being successful now with your own .com, your own domain. The second thing we have we on Thursday, uh, we, uh, so we have another Thursday training at 6 p.m., Excuse me, Mike? Yeah, it's called Traffic Source Day. So that comes back to what we we're talking about is how do I generate more traffic to my website? Um, how do I know how to maximize my ads? How do I know how to calculate my return on inverse and, uh, in, uh, investment uh, and all that kind of stuff. So traffic and that's at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays? Eastern on every and Thursday. Wednesday, what time is that? 6 p.m. It's all time is 6 p.m. Uh -huh. Okay. We're, we're late out <laughs> in Groove Card. And then we have Focus Friday. Focus Friday is really, really cool. That's when we pick a new topic that we think would most benefit our merchants. And for example, um, this week we're going to look at the legality of owning an e-commerce store, how to set up everything to help you make sure you're, you know, doing everything legally. So that's going to cover things like your terms and conditions, your privacy policy, getting your taxes right. And so because we're not legal expert, we're going to work with a company called FTC Garden and they're going to give people, you know, free access to their software and it's going to update all the time. Um, and next Friday, we're going to cover how to open your own business. People need help simply to start an LLC, getting an EIN number uh, in a way that they don't go to legal Zoom and spend 500 bucks when they can do that, you know, at, at no cost. Um, and and uh, exactly, talk about, like you just mentioned, the separation of your personal goods and the business good and the protection it's giving you and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be. So where, where would be, is there like a list of all the topics or the, or, or are we going to get emails? Because I haven't seen them and they might be going into my spam box. Yeah, no, we have the email every week that tells you, hey, Barbara, show up on the webinar and that's what we're going to cover. Now, uh, it used to be uh, based on demand uh, every Thursday and then every Friday and even sometimes we had them on Monday and Tuesday. So now we redid that new format where it's going to break out into the welcome Wednesday for newbies. Uh, and then Thursday is going to be traffic and then Friday is going to be advanced stuff, right? If you're signed up for GrooveCart, guys, go check your spam filter. Go search for GrooveCart.com in your email and, and look for those emails for welcome Wednesday, traffic Thursday, and focus Friday webinars and uh, I am going to make as many of those as I can myself so we can kind yeah, of it's so process. interesting it's very very interesting I would say so so Wednesday is probably the least interesting the Thursday is just it's incredible I mean looking at different tactics to bring traffic to your website is wow. always something you can learn and we use a lot of stuff that you know how to do very well right and that merchants welcome uh, and then Friday could be how to create an, a powerful upsell campaign or it could be how the legalities of your business, right? So Focus Friday is meant to be dynamic and what we feel, uh, and sometimes it's even based on the vote system, what, mer what merchant feels they could benefit from. And okay. sometimes we, we have Q&A session, and sometimes we run over, but it's very dynamic. And another cool thing is uh, we're, uh, as owner of the company, we're usually, uh, so far, we're the only one doing training. And so you're getting some very good knowledge and we're probably going to solicit some help as well. But uh, so a lot of good stuff, very interesting, and people love our webinars. They come back over and over again, and the list just grows, and more and more people. And we, we have access to, do you guys record them? Can we watch the recordings? Yeah, we record them. So now, um, one of the things we heard from some of the users are telling us, do I need to do like 15 hours of training to be able to use 
uh, group chat. I don't think so, but we're putting also recording just because, you know, a lot of our users tend to come back and want to look at one training again and they want to review it. Right. So, where, um, where, where are those trainings? Is that in GrooveCard Academy or where are they? Oh, it's in GrooveCard Academy. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So everything we're trying to make it easy to find. So again, you can come back. I'm not sharing my screen, but on the upper right, you have a button that says uh, GrooveCard Academy and you go there and you're automatically an alumni when you join GrooveCard. No, yeah, I think there's a little, um, I wrote down the process for it. There's a little graduation hat. There's yeah. Little, there's, that'll take you there. So yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I, I want to res be respectful of your time. Thank you so much for um, investing your time with us today, guys. If you haven't signed up for GrooveCard yet, go to Deal Diva Groove. That's D-E-A-L-D-I-V-A-G-R-O-O-V-E.com, DealDivaGroove.com. Hit me up on Facebook at Facebook.com slash groups slash Deal Diva. My name is Barbara Drazga with the lovely and talented Matt. I didn't catch your last name, Matt from GrooveCard. Matt. Your last name is Seralta. Zeralta and Mike feels same in the background, um, yeah, feeding Matt, <laughs> Give him, making sure he's got water and sustenance there, and uh, who's um, uh, probably going to be on our next webinar about uh, ninja marketing tactics using GrooveCart in your store. So, hey, Mike, you want to poke your head in the video and say goodbye for us? Hey, Mike, you want to say goodbye? Mike, get over here. Mike is doing Mike all kinds of things. Mike a friend of mine. I've known him for probably 15 years back in the day when internet marketing was just a baby and we, we used to speak at the same events. And, uh, hey, Mike, so his marketing acumen from way back in the day is all built into um, the training you're going to get on GrooveCart and in GrooveCart. So, Mike, just wanted to say thank you before I sign off. Thanks, Barbara. I appreciate it. I'm going to put Matt back on. Okay, everyone. I, I was right next to Matt here in the training. Sorry if I was a little loud in the background, but here's Matt. It's Take all good. You guys are moving awesome. into Thank you. Bye, Matt. Thanks. See you guys later. Hi. Looking forward to Ninja Day. I know, right? Talk to you Take later. Care, guys. Bye. Bye.